On Friday, we looked at Ezekiel 16, where God pronounced judgment on Israel for the sin of idolatry. But God also promised that he would remember the covenant he made and redeem the Hebrew nation. And now in chapter 17, God speaks to Israel in a riddle, a story, about his sovereignty over them in every situation. And as he worked out his plans for Israel then, it's a reminder for you and I now that God is intimately engaged in the intricacies of our lives today, and he's working out his plans for us. The riddle given in verses 2 through 10 is explained in verses 11 through 21. It's about Babylon's conquest of Israel and the subsequent relationship between these two powers arranged by God through treaties and oaths. The problem comes when a member of Israel's royal family rebels against Babylon, disregards and breaks these sworn treaties, and misrepresents God in the process. We hear the heart of the Lord beginning in verse 15 where he says, Nevertheless, this man of Israel's royal family rebelled against Babylon, sending ambassadors to Egypt to request a great army and many horses. Can Israel break her sworn treaties like that and get away with it? And the Lord's answer is a resounding no. So here's how this story applies to you and I today. Many times the circumstances in our lives are less than what we desire or hope for. But if we've submitted our lives to the Lord, that means we've agreed to trust Him in the good times and in the bad. Even when troubles come, and they will come, our response must remain in the context of who we are in Christ and the reality that He's over all things and using all things together for good in our lives. And so we demonstrate our submission to, our identification with, and our trust in God through the attitudes, behaviors, and choices that we display during those challenging times. In the riddle of Ezekiel 17, Israel didn't do that. James spoke this truth to the early church. He said, brothers and sisters, when many troubles come upon you, consider them an opportunity for great joy. For the testing of your faith gives endurance a chance to grow. Let it grow. For when endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Say, God has a purpose in whatever challenges you and I are facing today. His purpose is growth toward our ultimate destination, being like Jesus, perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. So my encouragement to you and I today is to grow through the challenges we face and represent the Lord rightly as we do so.